Hi, and welcome back to Break 100 Golf. I'm John. If you're looking for information about the BenQ LH820ST, then you've come to the right place. First, let me start out by saying I was looking for a new projector. I knew all along I was going to get a new projector. It wasn't bright enough. It didn't have enough functionality for me. Uh, it didn't cover the full screen. I basically was only using about 60% of my screen because I could not accomplish a one-to-one -one ratio because I have a eight foot four by eight foot four square golf simulator, which I needed to have because I only wanted to take up one bay of my garage, which is where my golf simulator is. So here was my criteria. I needed to have over 3,500 lumens. It needed to be short throw. That would give me more of an installation capability to put the projector exactly where I wanted it to have, not have any shadows, and fill up my screen at a one-to-one -one ratio. You need to have both vertical and horizontal keystone. So basically the keystone helps you shift the image to make it fit perfectly. So it's, it'll turn this way, it'll turn this way, that way, this way, all these different directions in order to fill your screen. And it also had a great feature called corner fit, which allows you to dial in each corner exactly to fill up your screen. Not only that, it also had a one-to-one -one ratio setting, which is for me, 1080 by 1080, which is amazing. My other projector, I was not able to accomplish a one-to-one -one ratio because there's just not enough room to move the projector back in the garage because the doors are gonna come up, right? So I really needed to have a short throw projector with a one-to-one -one ratio option, and this was perfect. I also needed to have a 3.5 millimeter output jack for my audio. It was important to me because I use a party speaker for all of my golf simulator sounds. So with golf simulation, if you don't have one, there are ambient sounds like birds or when the ball splashes into the water or when the ball hits the turf or the green or whatnot hits the pin. So it really adds to the immersiveness of the golf simulation, having some sort of sound. I also needed to be able to attain that one by one ratio easier. Like I said, it was very, very important to me and this projector does just that. It was also very important to have some sort of zoom option for a perfect fit. So I didn't wanna to have to mount my projector and then have to move it because I couldn't fit it to that screen in this projector handled that nicely. So after I go through the features and functions here, we're gonna go out to my garage where my golf simulator is and I'll show you how I have my projector mounted and I'll also show you all the features and functions and how easy it is to fit your projector image to the screen. Now, if you enjoyed the content today or learned something, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. I will continue to work hard to bring in-depth reviews and golf simulation videos to this channel for everybody. Now the projector does come in full HD, 1920 by 1080 resolution for its native resolution. I was able to fit it to the screen at 1080 by 1080 very easily, which I'll show you once we go out to the golf simulator. Uh, it does have an exclusive golf mode for vivid greens and uh, you know blue, so like blue sky, and you'll really be able to see the difference. I'll show you a before and after here in just a moment of what my old projector looked like versus what the new one looked like, and it is marvelous. So golf mode, it basically it optimizes the blue sky and the green colors very easily. And I turned that on and I left it at that and I increased the brightness by about 8% and it's perfect. It was really important to me that I had more than 3,500 lumens. This projector has 3,600 lumens. It is much brighter than my other projector and it is basically all I will ever need. Also, I needed to be able to install it in an area that wasn't directly above where I'm swinging. When I first mounted it, I ended up moving it another three feet over. So the first time I mounted it, it was really easy to set up and then I moved it over three feet. It was a little bit more difficult, which is why I loved having the vertical and horizontal keystone, the corner fit and all the other functionality to get this installed. So this feature was important. 
Basically, you can place it outside the hit zone with no shadows at a 0.5 throw ratio. So it really was a deal breaker for me if it didn't have the ability to do that. So a short throw projector is going to help you to attain that in just about any situation. All right, and it also has digital shrink. And I use that during the process, especially with my projector being offset a little bit. So I was able to shrink the image down to get it exactly where I needed it before I used the corner fit and the keystone. It was a really nice feature. You can adjust it in half percent increments all the way down to 75% of the image. So it also has digital lens shift. Now, I ended up not using that because I just hopped up on my ladder and I was able to turn my mount just slightly to get it exactly where I needed it. So I ended up not needing to use it, but I did test it and it does work. And you know, if you've already got it mounted and locked in, you don't wanna be climbing up on your ladder to adjust that thing. So I have 11 and a half foot ceilings and it is pertinent that I have a tall ladder to get up there so I can adjust that thing at the top and then be done with it. So again, you're going to have ideal projection alignment with the uh, 2D Keystone corner fit, vertical and horizontal. I had to have that. A lot of the projectors, the lower end projectors only have vertical Keystone adjustment. So up and down, and, and, and that just wasn't enough. That was not gonna work for me, especially with my one-to-one -one ratio. So. so you can easily switch the ratios too. You know, and, and the, I can tell you, there's not very many projectors that have a one-to-one -one ratio. And, you know, if you're gonna buy a golf simulator and you have room for a 10 by eight screen, by all means, buy that. But I did not wanna take up room in my second bay or my one of my other two bays that I had in my garage because it was gonna hinder my ability to park my vehicles in there if I needed to. Lastly, it is maintenance free. And what that means is there are several different types of lamps or lighting for your projectors. You've got LED, which is what my last projector was. You've got a standard lamp, which is replaceable. And then you also have a laser projector, which is what this is. And what it means by maintenance free is means you don't have to do anything to it. You don't have to replace the lamp. So, it's going to give you 20 to 30,000 hours of life with that laser system. So there are different settings that you can have for your lighting. So I have it at the highest one. So it'll give you up to 30,000 if you use one of the eco modes, but it'll give you up to 20,000 hours of life on the highest setting, which is what I use. I want it to be bright. Now, that may not seem like a lot at first until I did the math. So you figure this. I use my golf simulator about four times a week for about three hours a session. If you take that and multiply it times 52 weeks, now you're at 624 hours per year. Multiply that times 10 years. You're at 6,240 hours. So you're only at one third of that 20,000 hours in 10 years. By that point, BenQ will have made another bad to the bone projector to replace it and you're gonna want that. So plenty of time. All right, so here is a before and after of my old projector image on the screen and my new projector image on the screen. The image on the left is from my old projector. If you notice on the top and on the bottom, I'm only using about 60% of my screen. Now, did that bother me when I was using it as a golf simulator? Not really. Uh, I enjoyed using it. However, I wanted full immersiveness and that meant I needed to have a full screen. And it wasn't just for me, I wanted it for my channel. I wanted the best image I could possibly have for the channel. On the right, that is my new BenQ LH820ST projected image. If you notice, it fills up the entire screen. Notice the color, notice the brightness. So that golf mode really brings out the greens and the blues. Look at the water. Uh, that's the last hole, uh, hole 18 at Pebble Beach. 
and you look at it on the left, it just really didn't pop as much as it does uh, with the new projector. It really makes a massive difference. When I first started driving balls into that screen with my new projector, I could not believe how much of a difference it made. What I ended up having to do is I had to screen record my software on my computer. So I use GS Pro for all of my golf simulation now. So if you've ever done any kind of editing, I had to screen record my image and then put a picture in picture of all my shots so that people could see the detail of my shots. I don't have to do that anymore. I can just show it with my new golf simulator projector on the screen. And when I first looked at it, you know, it, it looks like, it looks like it's fake. It looks like I've done a picture in picture and put it on there. And I see a lot of guys do that because they don't have that kind of image. So up next, before we go out into the garage and demonstrate all the features and functions, here is some course play using my new projector along with my GS Pro software. So we got the distance though, that we were looking for, the 225. So I hit that one, uh, 232. That's better. And I think I definitely got a good piece of that one too. So we got exactly what we wanted. 227 yards, got it real close to that circle. It looks like it's pretty straight. Getting close. I definitely hit that one. All right, that's gonna be right where I want it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good. I like it. All right, we're meandering down the fairway here. Looks like that's just fine. That looks perfect. Nice. 222 yard, three wood, I'll take it. Right in the middle of the fairway, all right. That might be too much. Stop. Woo wee, right to the edge. That should be good, that felt good. All right, nice. All right, let's go out into the garage and I'll show you how my projector mounted securely and safely. And then also I'll go through the features and functions of the BenQ LH820ST. All right, here we are out in the garage where my golf simulator is. I'm gonna show you where I have my projector mounted and then I'll go through some of the features and functions and really, and really how easy it is to modify the image on the golf sim screen. All right, so let's go through how I have my projector mounted. Initially, I mounted it dead center. So you can see that I have the projector offset to the right. So initially I mounted it about three feet to the left, maybe about 30 inches. And there was just some concern about if I had an errant swing that didn't exactly follow the path that it normally does that I would have an issue. So I mounted it 30 inches to the right offset of my golf sim. If you read through the BenQ manual, it will tell you, you should have a Kensington lock. So the Kensington lock is a cable. This one is six feet long. I mounted a hammock hanger which is just basically a steel hook on the same joist that I mounted my projector mount, which is my old mount. And there's four screws that go into that. And then the cable goes through that. I have it zip tied around the mast of my projector mount. And then it goes into the Kensington slot, which is to the left of where the LAN cable goes into your projector if you choose to use that feature. Now, you'll also notice that I have a zip tie around my projector, that is a Panduit strap. 
36 inch Panduit strap. And the reason I have that is that goes through the bottom of my projector mount, just as an added feature. So I have my HDMI cable that goes into the back of the projector, along with my 3.5 millimeter audio cable. And it runs, if you follow it, to the back of the garage, along the back of the garage, along the sidewall to this area. And that's where I have a lot of my golf stuff stored. And that is exactly where my golf simulator laptop is going to sit. Let's go ahead and turn on the projector and I'll go through the features and functions with you. All right, so we've got the projector on and I've got my golf simulator gaming laptop hooked up. So once I plug my gaming laptop in, it communicates with the projector and the, the projector communicates back to the one by one 1080 by 1080 resolution. So I've got two displays set up in my computer. One is the, you know, the native screen that comes with the laptop. And then this one is set up uh, as a secondary display uh, for my laptop. So as soon as I plug it in, they communicate with each other and it goes right to that setting. So to go into the menu, you just hit the menu key on the remote. So you can set up picture display network settings and your system, you've got also got information. The first thing was that I immediately wanted to go through was to change it to golf mode. So you've got these different modes, sRGB, video, you can customize it yourself, uh, bright mode, presentation mode, or golf mode. The golf mode is bad to the bone. That's what I have mine set up. And I just increased one thing, and that was my brightness by 4%, and that was it. Now let's go over to display. So I really wanted this feature to be both horizontal and vertical. So for Keystone, you go into the Keystone, so you can adjust your image vertically by changing it like that. or horizontally by changing it like that. It doesn't bother me to change it because it was so easy to set up. I honestly couldn't believe it. I moved that projector from the middle over about 30 inches offset and I had it set up in like 10 minutes. Just honestly, I couldn't believe it. So, you hit back, now I've got my keystone just set. Now you've got corner fit. <laughs> this is an awesome option on this projector. You'll have a hard time finding anything like that other than with this BenQ projector, it's amazing. This is one of the reasons why I jumped on this projector, why I spent $1,899 on it, okay? Because of that. I have this one by one ratio, which a lot of people would find to be very annoying I did not because I was willing to suffer with the one by one ratio so that I didn't take up more than one bay in my garage. Now you can also use the test pattern. I ended up just using my golf simulator because there are things within my golf simulator that my software that are not in that test pattern. So you can turn that grid on if you want and adjust your screen with the grid but I ended up using my golf simulator because I found that there's information on there that's not included in the test pattern that I was able to better easily fit my corners, okay? Also, this projector has 3D capability. I'm not gonna turn that setting on right now, but if you have a 3D movie or whatnot, 3D content, you will need the glasses, but it is 3D ready. HDMI format, they have RGB limited, RGB full, YUV limited, YUV full, and auto. I just keep mine on auto. Next thing, image resizing. This was a huge feature that I loved because rather than mount your projector and then take it down off the mount and remount it somewhere further forward or back on that joist, that was not an option for me. So this really worked out great for me. So if you go down to image resizing, digital shrink, so right now I've got it at 86.5%. So if, you, if I needed to increase it or shrink it, you just hit left on the button. So if we remember, we're at 86.5. So if I wanna go backwards, you can go in half percent increments. And now we're shrinking my screen, right? So now we're just gonna go right back to that 86.5%. 
an absolutely great feature as far as getting this thing dialed in before you start using your golf simulator. So you also have digital zoom on that menu. I ended up not even needing to use that. And then also, if you're just wasting space and pixels, you can go into the blanking and, and blank that out. Again, I ended up not even needing to use that either. All right, next thing is screen fill. So if you have a 10 by eight enclosure, you're gonna use 16 by nine. Uh, there's also a four by three option. And then I have one by one ratio or 1080 by 1080, which was huge. As soon as I turned this on, it made everything so easy. It communicated with my gaming laptop. So I didn't have to go into my display settings and just set everything up. And as soon as I plug the HDMI cable into my laptop, it just recognizes that I have my projector there, even before I turn my projector on, which is amazing. All right, next setting would be the digital lens shift. If you notice, I only moved it one degree to the left, and that's why I didn't have to climb up my ladder, loosen the set screw, and turn the projector on the mast, on my projector mount, one degree to the left. I just used the digital lens shift, which was a really, really nice feature. Now, I am not going to change that, because if I do, it does mess up your settings for that option, so I am not gonna change it. All right, next option would be fast mode. I don't currently have that turned on. If you go to BenQ's website, it'll tell you more about that. That's gonna help give you a more, I guess, smoother uh, image and video on the screen if you choose to use that option. I have mine set up so perfectly. Honestly, I ended up not even using it, but uh, you can uh, use that option if you choose to do so. All right, next would be settings. So your projector installation, I have mine set for front ceiling, which is really important. Uh, if you were to change that, that's gonna invert the image, okay? So if you wanna be on front ceiling. Remote, uh, that one I have for front and top. So basically the top is now on the bottom and then the front so that I can use my remote basically anywhere and it will pick up that infrared. All right, so the next couple settings, auto source search, I do have that turned on. Light settings, I have that set to normal. So if you're wanting to preserve the life of your projector, let's say you're not using for golf simulation. In my opinion, you should have it as bright as possible for your golf simulator. And that's part of the reason why I have this projector. So you can adjust that. That's economic, that's dimming, dynamic dimming, custom, and normal, which I just keep it on, on normal. And like I said earlier, 20,000 hours, that would give me 30 years. <laughs> of projector image by then, I'll be sitting on my back patio, having a glass of wine by then, and enjoying my retirement and my grandchildren. <laughs> Next, operation settings, blank timer, reminder message, high altitude mode, power on off settings. I didn't mess with any of those settings. Uh, security settings, you can lock things out. You can set up a password, power on the lock, my baud rate, I kept that at 115.200. My HMI equalizer, I have it set for auto. And I don't use the USB power switch. So if you make a mistake there, you can reset all of your settings by hitting OK at the bottom. Next would be my system settings. I have the microphone off, the monitor out off, and my audio pass through set to HDMI 1. And it does work, by the way. Background settings, um, BenQ, splash screen, BenQ, you can change that. I like the BenQ. Menu settings, I'll give you some options. I have the menu display time set for 20 seconds. However, for me, that's not long enough. So I'm gonna change that right now to 30 seconds. Audio settings, uh, I have my volume set up all the way. My microphone volume all the way off and my power on off ringtone set to off. So one thing about the volume, I do use the 3.5 millimeter jack and a 3.5 millimeter cable that runs all the way around to my uh, golf simulator speaker. Now, one, the first thing I noticed was that I didn't have as high of an output from my 3.5 millimeter jack on this projector as my old. In fact, I have to turn my speaker up twice as much. However, it ended up being a huge benefit because 
the output on my old projector, the frequency that which it output was terrible. And it was just tinny, too much treble and all this stuff. And I just couldn't get it set up the way I wanted it. Well, this is much deeper. The tones are much better. It's got much more boom. And I'm more than happy to turn it up a little bit more on my golf sim speaker because it is much better on the output, even though it's not as high as an output, it is much better. So I've had some questions. Why do I use a golf simulator speaker? Well, you have ambient sounds, you've got birds. When your ball goes into the water, which I know God knows I would never do that, right? You get a splash sound, right? If you hit the pin, it gives that, I just hit the pin sound. When you hit the green or the fairway, you'll get that ball bounce sound. So it really helps with the immersiveness with your golf simulation software. All right, next setting would be the projector ID setting. I don't need that, I've got it set to off. And then if you wanna go back to the factory default to reset all settings, that's a great option. If you've made a huge mistake and you just wanna start all over with your installation. In fact, if you move your projector, that's probably not a bad idea. All right, here's your system information. That will be the last thing on the menu. Native resolution is 1080 by 1080 currently. Detected resolution is 1080 by 1080 at 60 Hertz. So one thing I wanted to mention when I first set this up, for some reason, my laptop set it at 59.67 or something like that Hertz. Well, it just didn't fill up the screen correctly. So, I had to change it to 60 Hertz and I figured that out. So that may save you some time. As soon as I changed it to 60 Hertz, it fixed everything. My source is HDMI one. I've got it in picture mode golf. Light mode is set to normal. 3D form format is set to off. Color system is RGB. Lamp usage time, I've only used it eight hours so far. I didn't even know that was there, by the way. <laughs> firmware version 1.01. .01. I haven't checked yet for the firmware version. So you would need to run an LAN cable from your computer to the projector in order to update the firmware. I'll do that here in the next couple of weeks. And then lastly, your service code. And that's pretty much it. So let's go back up to my office and we'll wrap things up. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video about the BenQ LH820ST. As far as pricing, I paid $1,899 through Gung Ho Golf. My recommendation on this projector is if you're thinking about buying a golf simulator projector, I do not think that you can possibly find another one with the amount of features and functions that is really truly designed to be a golf simulator projector. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications as I'll be bringing out several videos per week on this channel regarding golf simulation. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.